So I finally managed to get my hands on a Pimax 5K+. Plus. So here's what I thought of it. But first, a quick TLDR. The device has a ludicrously large field of view, which makes it the most immersive headset money can buy. However, it comes at a price. As well as the obvious price tag on the unit itself, you'll also need to do a couple of hardware tweaks, maybe, and you'll need an extremely high-end GPU in order to fully take advantage of the higher resolution that it offers. Also, if you wear glasses, forget about it. Right now, it is completely uncomfortable for glasses wearers. And it may not represent the best value for money at the moment, since you will need to be upgrading from a full Vive kit if you already own one, or you'll need to separately purchase some controllers and base stations to make it fully functional. Just this alone is not going to give you a VR experience. You do need some added extras. And right now you can only purchase just the headset. So the Pimax 5K Plus and its sibling, the 8K model, are the only headsets on the market that I feel offer something truly unique and not simply an iterative upgrade on the last generation headsets. And that's absolutely crucial because otherwise I don't think you'd be trusting your hard earned cash to some random Chinese company. What makes the Pimax 5K Plus different is this absolutely enormous field of view, which it achieves by having two very large and very canted lenses. That means they're at an angle like that, rather than being flat in front of your face. So for me, I've always felt that field of view is perhaps one of, if not the most important aspects to any VR headset. Some people get lost in the minutiae of resolution and screen door effect and color reproduction, but as someone who grew up in the 80s playing video games on this CPC 464, which had a resolution of 320 by 200 pixels and 16 colors if you were lucky, that sort of stuff has never really bothered me. I don't own a 4K TV because it's pretty much a waste. Instead, I use a 1080p projector and watch movies on the entirety of my living room wall. It's that field of view that immerses you into any content, whether that's VR or movies or whatever. So for me, I was really truly excited about checking out the huge field of view offered by this headset. And if you're like me and the resolution, color reproduction, all of that, you could take or leave, but it's the field of view that you really care about, then this might actually be the headset for you. But keep watching. So as of right now, the Pimax 5K Plus has by far the largest field of view of any of the current generation of VR headsets. And I don't just mean it's a small five or 10 degree upgrade on the next largest competitor, which is by the way, the Valve Index at around 115 degrees. In fact, this goes up to around 170 degrees on the largest setting, though more than likely you'll be running it at around 150 degrees. So it's actually a massive difference. Other headsets you can expect to get around 90 to 100 degrees. Now field of view numbers are not an exact science, so exactly what field of view you're gonna get is going to depend very much on your face shape, how far away from your head the headset sits, how, how close the lenses are to you, which is adjustable on some other headsets and not on this, but more on that later. Just take it that the field of view is not an exact number that you should go around quoting, it's more well, this has the largest field of view and exactly what you get is gonna depend on you. So all right, let's talk specs for a bit. So the Pimax 5K Plus is a sort of Steam VR headset in that it uses the Valve Lighthouse tracking system. Although it's not natively supported by the Steam VR client, you will still need to run the Pimax Pi Tool software that comes with it. Now at the moment, since you can only pre-order just the headset itself, you will need to be upgrading from an existing Vive setup or you'll need to purchase controllers and base stations separately. Although of course, if you're using it for something like sim games, you may not need controllers, so you might be able to get away with just the base stations for tracking. In fact, for sim games, you might not even need two base stations. You could probably get away with just one placed in front of your sim racing setup. So to clarify, I've been testing this on my main gaming machine with a regular 1080 GPU in it, first with the Vive Ones and then with the Valve Index controllers, which are also supported, but only by the beta version of the Pi Tool software at the moment. The displays are running at 2560 by 1440 pixels per eye. That's compared to 1440 by 1600 on the Valve Index. So it's a considerably higher resolution 
than even the Valve Index. But in terms of colour reproduction, the panels feel a little bit washed out by comparison, more in line with the original Rift display, I would say. That said, I haven't noticed a screen door effect at all on this. As I said, the screen door, the colour reproduction and stuff isn't all that important to me personally, but if, I, if you asked me, I would say I haven't noticed it on this. The increased field of view for me really just makes up for any other shortcomings in terms of the displays itself. In terms of comfort, even if you have very small sort of frames like I do, you will have trouble fitting them inside of this. There is no backwards and forwards adjustment on the lenses, although you can change the IPD the left and right separation, you can't move the lenses backwards and forwards, and they are placed very close to your eyes. Some people have even said that it's, even without wearing glasses, it's touching their eyeballs or their eyelashes to the point of being a little bit uncomfortable. So in order to test and use this at all, I've had to double up the uh, facial interface padding basically with an old cover that I had for my Vive from VR covers, I think it was, Placing that in there on top of this gave it enough padding to be able to fit over my glasses. Now there was probably a more elegant way that I could have done this, perhaps removed this and then strapped them or glued them together, but for now I've just been literally putting it on there and then putting the whole thing on my face. And yes, it was a bit awkward and it takes a lot of adjustments each time to try and get right. The three-point Velcro strap that they have on the back feels a bit cheap and isn't particularly comfortable. It's basically like the original Vive if you had that. At 514 grams for the whole headset, it's not particularly heavy, it's not the lightest of headsets either, but it does feel a little bit out of place on a $600 headset. Another major downside is that this strap doesn't include any sort of audio output at all. Unlike say the Rift S and the Quest, which doesn't have headphones either, that does produce some sound inside of the headset itself, this doesn't produce any audio at all and you will need to supply your own headphones or earbuds. There's a small 3.5mm jack on the left hand side for that. Now obviously the original Vive didn't include headphones of any kind either and it was largely criticised for that. Back in the day I just had some speakers set up in the room that I was using to fill the whole room with audio, it wasn't directional obviously. Now they have promised to release a sort of deluxe audio strap for the Pimax as well, but obviously that's not here yet, that's coming later and it will be yet again an additional cost on top of quite a pricey headset. For now, if you do have an original Vive with an original Vive Deluxe audio strap and you also happen to have a 3D printer or can get a hold of some 3D printed parts, then there are some available to download which will adapt it for use with this. Not an ideal option, but it is an option if you wanted to do that. So in terms of software, the Pimax 5K Plus, despite being a Steam VR headset, is not directly compatible with Steam VR. You will need to download and install the Pi Tool software, and I would suggest getting the beta version of that, which fixes a number of things, as well as adds in support for the Valve Index controllers. The Pi Tool software allows you to adjust the various options on the headset, such as brightness for each individual screen, contrast, and things like field of view. So there are three field of view settings, small, which you should just ignore, medium, which is probably what you're gonna to wanna to run it at most of the time, and large, which is gonna cover your entire field of view, but require a lot more processing power and introduce a lot more distortion at the edges. Also, we have to talk about performance because these are such high resolution displays, it really does need an absolute beast of a gaming machine to run this thing. So I actually took it down to 0.75 uh, multiplier of the native resolution, but I, I just wasn't able to run this at the full resolution to take full advantage of that. And I suspect you'd need something like a 2080 Ti to really do that. Still, even at 0.75 resolution, I was able to comfortably run No Man's Sky, which is where I did most of my testing. And that's a pretty unoptimized game for VR anyway, it seemed to run reasonably enough for me to enjoy myself using this. Now I should note that when I first got the unit for testing and I tried to hook it up with the Valve Index controllers, they didn't work at all. Instead, there was some weird different input passed into Steam VR. And what this tells me is that the Pi tool is emulating rather than directly passing through the controllers that are connecting. 
the fact that Steam couldn't recognize its own Valve Index controllers meant that the Pi tool itself was doing something weird to the input. Now, assuming the Pi tool stays updated, this should never be a problem to you. But there might be a problem with compatibility in future. If you were to get some other third-party controllers, I don't know what, but there is the possibility they wouldn't actually be compatible with the Pi tool at all. Just something small to bear in mind, and one of the consequences of having to run through a third-party piece of software to make it work with SteamVR. And I should also note that even with the beta version of the Pi tool software and with compatibility options turned on, I did also have some weird visual artifacts with, for instance, No Man's Sky in terms of pop-ups distances for trees and other rendered objects. Nothing too game-breaking, but I could certainly see a difference when I switched back to the Valve Index, which is natively supported by SteamVR, obviously. There is a little bit of weirdness that may occur, and you may need to delve in a bit and tweak some more settings here and there to make it work with the Pimax. So now we come to the all-important question, which is, should you buy a Pimax 5K Plus. If I haven't said this enough, the field of view is absolutely outstanding. Yes, there is some distortion on the edges, but it wasn't something I really noticed. And to be honest, you shouldn't be directly looking at the edges when in VR. You should always look forward and move around your head to look around rather than moving your eyeballs to the edge. But there are some massive downsides to the Pimax 5K Plus. And whether it's worth the extra effort is not something I can tell you. On top of the obvious thing like the price, I feel like the build quality of the head strap specifically isn't quite where I'd like it to be. The fact that you need some hardware tweaks just to even use it with glasses. You'll need to add your own padding onto the facial interface. You need to then put your own headphones on or 3D print some bits so you can use the deluxe audio strap. That shouldn't be needed at this price point. And then there's the extra software tweaks that you might need to do, compatibility mode for certain games or figuring out where you can reliably downsample it to rather than just letting SteamVR automatically downsample along with the performance of your computer. It doesn't do that, you will have to manually downsample it and that's not really user-friendly for beginners. Then again, since the only way to use this at the moment is to upgrade from an existing Vive kit, you're probably not going to be a first-time user when you buy this headset. This is really designed for advanced users who want the best of the best, at least in terms of field of view and resolution. And that's true for the time being anyway. Yes, Pimax has promised a deluxe audio strap. They have promised extra padding. They recognize there's an issue of wearing it with glasses, but none of those solutions are here yet and this is all that we can base our judgment on. So would I recommend upgrading from an existing Vive full kit? Well, if money was no concern and you have a powerful graphics card to really take advantage of this and you don't wear glasses, then absolutely. As I said, the field of view is incredible. It is the most immersive headset I've ever experienced. Also, if you have your own flight or racing rig set up, then you may not need those extra VR controllers. You may not even need two base stations. You could get away with just one for tracking from the front. And in those cases, I think this is seriously worth considering. But I think I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that overall I had a pretty frustrating experience with the Pimax 5K Plus. The whole messing around with extra padding just to accommodate my glasses and then having to put on some headphones and plug them in too, it was all a bit much. It adds another five, 10 minutes for me onto that VR time when I could otherwise just put on the Valve Index and play straight away. If you only have half hour to an hour each time to play, you can't really be affording to lose five, 10 minutes, which I did with this. So for me, the pick up and play aspect slightly wins out in the end over the added field of view. And that's a real shame because I do think it's the most immersion I've had yet. If I was setting this up for an eight hour stretch of gameplay and could afford to spend five, 10 minutes to get it comfortable and perfect, then I think that would absolutely be worth it. It's just, it's not for me. To be honest, it all feels a little bit early stage at the moment. This is almost certainly a glimpse of how headsets will be in the future. 
it's just perhaps not something you should be buying right now. Once they've released that extra facial padding, once they have the deluxe audio strap with headphones built in, once they've improved the Steam VR compatibility, I think on the software side of things, this could be a real contender, but that may not be for another six months to a year, at which point there could be other options. Oh, and hey, perhaps in a year you can finally afford that graphics card upgrade that you're gonna need in order to get the best out of this. It just feels like a glimpse of what is to come in the future and not necessarily something you need right now. Anyway, I'd love to hear your views on the Pimax 5K+. Plus. If you have one, what have you been using it for? Are you mainly using it for racing or flight sims or for general VR games? And have you experienced any sort of frustrations with it? What have been your problems or has it all been smooth sailing? Please do tell me about it. Let's chat down in the comments. If you appreciated this review, please hit like and consider subscribing. We do two reviews and giveaways every single week as well as the occasional technology tips, tricks, and tutorials from all of us at makeuseof.com. Thanks for watching and until next time. Oh, if you're wondering why we haven't done a Valve Index review yet, I do have one, but to be honest, I wasn't sure about the controllers. But anyway, I think I've made my mind up now, so expect that review soon too. Until next time, thanks for watching. As ever, we are giving away a Pimax 5K+. Plus. If you'd like to be in with a chance of winning, please head on over to the link in the description or go to makeuseof.com slash giveaways. There you'll find a Gleam giveaway widget. Enter your details in there to be in with a chance of winning. And when it asks you for a video bonus code to thank you for watching the review, type in the code massive F-O-V, all one word, and you'll get some bonus entries in the competition. Entries close in about three weeks. Winners will be notified by email, so please add competitions at makeuseof.com to your address book to make sure you don't miss that email from us. Good luck, and until next time.